to fill or not to fill? That's the question. I'm Lake, the Motor World Geek. Let's go to the dyno to find the answer. Oil filters. To fill or not to fill? You know, we've spent so much time over the years actually talking about ev just about everything there is to know about oil filters. But you came up with some an interesting question and the internet did a couple of days ago. I'm thinking, wait a minute, something just doesn't sound right here, Lake. It's pretty crazy, Don, that we did this video recently where I did an oil change on my daughter's brand new 2023 Toyota Corolla. And we did it, you know, early on, because the factory says go 10,000 miles. We're never going 10,000 miles. Yeah, no. We know there's too much oil. All right, so we'll leave a link in the video description below. That yeah. way, if you haven't watched that video, you can go watch it. Yeah. But like you said, in that comment section on that video, we were being told that we did it wrong. I did the oil change wrong because I poured oil in the filter before I installed it. Tell me this on the phone, I'm like, what? Wait, wait, what's time out here? Wait, what, what were they thinking, Lake? So I actually went and Googled it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, should you pre-fill an oil filter? I was shocked by the number of people that said you should not fill the oil filter. But not just the number of people, but the couple of reasons why they thought not. So the primary reason that people said you shouldn't pre-fill an oil filter is that the oil that you're putting into the filter hasn't been filtered, it's dirty essentially. Oh my gosh. No, no, no. And right. the reason, the reason that we know this is because after all the testing that we've done over the years, and it's been a lot of years, yeah. how many times have you tested the oil that came right out of the bottle? We have several times. Fortunately for you, we actually have our little dyno mule engine and we've got some testing to do. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to not just give you our opinion because people have all kinds of opinions. Right, exactly. We're gonna give you some data. We're gonna do some real science here. As we've done in the past, we're not just going to explain and tell you guys what's going on. We're gonna prove it. We're gonna show you. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some fresh oil right out of the drum and we're actually gonna send it off to the lab and have it analyzed because at Speed Diagnostics, we can do what's called a particle count. Mm -hmm. We can count the number of particles. So basically, how dirty is that fresh oil? What is in there that shouldn't supposed to be? There? Right. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that oil in this engine mm -hmm. and we're just gonna prime the engine mm -hmm. so that the oil has gone through the filter mm -hmm. and then we're gonna take a sample of the oil right out of the oil. Without starting the engine. Right. We're gonna see how long it actually takes to prime the to engine prime without the, with, oil. Without putting oil in the engine, mm -hmm. because since the engine's not actually running, we're not gonna do any damage by doing that. We're right. actually going to pre-lube the engine. Yep, so we'll share you the results at the end of this video of what that oil was, how clean it was, out of the drum, and then out of the engine. But before we do that, I gotta tell you something. What's that like? So, you know, I am a certified lubrication specialist. Make fun of it if you want to. Call it tribologist. Uh, yeah, yeah, tribology. It's a real thing. It's a real uh, thing. I didn't, it's not, I didn't get it off the internet. I, I didn't <laughs> really know what that was until I met you, buddy. Yeah. Within our group, within the lubrication engineering realm, we can kind of say there's four R's of proper lubrication. So important. You got to have the right oil, which it means the right viscosity and the right additive package for the application. It's got to be in the right place at the right time and the right amount. Correct. The problem I have, theoretically, with what people have said about not pre-filling the filter is that by You're not- You're violating one of those at least. Yeah, we're not getting enough oil to the right place at the right time. Correct. You know, that's the problem. It, we've basically compromised three of the four R's. Yeah. We got the right oil, yeah. but if we're not getting it to the engine, so we're gonna prove this out, right? We're gonna put it to the test. Yep. Here's what we're gonna do. Don's gonna take this filter, we're gonna put it on the engine, and no oil in it. And then we're gonna pre-lube it like you said. We're gonna measure the time. We're gonna show you on this gauge, you're gonna see how long does it take for it to actually reach pressure. Because until there's pressure, there's no restriction to flow. 
right? The pump's going to make flow, but it's not going to show you how much oil pressure there is until it hits the gauge. Correct. correct. So we want to see. It's not a huge amount of time. It's not going to be a huge amount of time. We want to see. There's not a bunch of oil lines and stuff on here, but it's not going to be huge. But it is going to be quite different than if you were to fill the filter up first. Right. So what we're going to do, we're going to run it, that prime it, but then after we've actually primed it. You're taking our oil sample. Taking, taking the oil sample. We're going to let the engine sit for a while, let all that oil will drain back down and mm -hmm. compromise it. Then we're gonna actually just going to do it again. And you're going to be able to see how long does it take from the time we begin to turn the engine, how long does it take to get oil pressure? The longer it takes to get oil pressure, the longer the engine's moving with out lubrication. It's kind of easy to, to conceptualize if you think about it. So yes, is there some oil left on when you shut the engine off? Absolutely. Is there oil between the, the rod bearing and the crankshaft? Absolutely. There's going to be a little bit there. But what happens is when you start that engine and you're just a couple of seconds even without oil mm -hmm. pressure, what happens is, is that film that's actually supposed to be between the rod bearing and the crankshaft is so thin that you will actually get the metal of the bearing touching the metal of the crankshaft. Now, all you guys that have taken race motors apart, you know, before you've seen the little scratches and stuff that are on the bearing sometimes, even though the bearing's still good, most of that comes from the first four or five seconds when you're cranking the engine over. I haven't told you the whole truth yet. So I already know what's gonna happen. <laughs> we do. Yeah. <laughs> The reason why, and I actually have the data to back it up. Yeah. And the data is actually hidden in that previous video when everyone was roasting me for putting on the filter. I showed the results from my Porsche engine mm -hmm. when we actually were breaking it in and we did that early oil change and all that. When I went through that, and again, that link's in the video description below, I showed the amount of bearing wear that occurred in that engine. And I actually mentioned that on those engines, that it's, a, it's really hard to prime those engines yeah. because you can't dyno them. They have to be in the car for them to run. It's an ECU thing, don't worry Some, about it. Sometimes it's really hard to do right. on some engines, yes. And it's a cartridge style filter. So it's not a canister. So right. it's really difficult to pre-fill the filter get the system and to get it primed. Yes. So guess what? When we actually ran that engine that first 138 miles, there was copper, tin, and lead. There was bearing material. And which, I which you can tell by not even taking it apart, just by doing the anal oil analysis. Right. The oil analysis showed us that. And then on the second oil change, it was still there. A, a slightly lower level, mm -hmm. but it was still there. Because yeah. the first one, dry start. Yeah. The second time, but that residual oil was there, so it was lower. Yep. What I didn't mention in the video, which is why I said I was lying a little bit, it bothered me, Don, <laughs> when I saw those first two results. And I'm like, man, this is bugging me that I'm not pre-filling the filter, put it on. I don't care that it's a cartridge. I'm going to figure out a way. I'm going to put the cartridge on, and I'm going to fill the canister with some oil anyway. And guess what just, happened? Just because just you, you did whatever you could to get right oil, oil, oil right place, yeah. right time, right amount. What the happened? four R's never fail. What happened, Like I'm pretty sure that third one, those bearing materials were gone. <laughs> <laughs> because it is proper lubrication, right oil, right place, right time, right amount. So if important. If you don't pre-fill the filter, you are compromising that last three of the four. Absolutely. So, enough of us talking about it. Let's show you. One thing that we didn't touch on that we should mention is that while the oil, however clean it is, coming out of your container, if you pour it through a dirty funnel, oh. Oh, okay, then that's a problem. Yeah. You know, don't store your funnel next to the grinding bench, okay? Yeah, that's bad. Yeah. Like we, at home, I've got a bucket that I put my funnel in, and I'll stick the funnel in there, and I'll put a rag on top and on bottom for storage for the next time to make sure that we, it, does, it stays clean. Right, yeah, so clean funnel, that way you're putting, you're not making the oil dirty while you're putting it in, that's kind of important. Correct, very yeah. important. So let's go ahead and put some oil in the engine and get started. Okay, so now we've just gotten done with cranking the, the oil pressure over with an empty filter and we've recorded on the video actually how long it takes. And it was 
it was probably you know four or five seconds I mean it was about what we figured it would be so but now the system is full so watch the gauge now and watch what happens as soon as I as I start the drill that's the difference between an empty oil filter and one that's already had oil in it what which one do you think the bearings are going to like better? So now we've put oil in the engine, we've primed it, we've circulated that engine oil through the oil filter. We're now going to take a sample of that oil out of the engine after it's been filtered by the filter. So what happens. Let a little bit drain first. All right. And we're going to be able to compare. How clean is this sample compared to how clean was the oil out of the drum? So we have our two samples. Out of the drum, out of the engine, we'll send them into the lab, and in about a week, we'll have the results. But through the magic of editing, you're gonna have them right now. So now, we've actually got data right here. Right we've drum. talked about this, we talked about this a little while ago. We've actually got the proof. So we got the results back from the lab, and what we do is call it a particle count. So you basically can do is you can see in the oil. Mm -hmm. So you flow the oil across this uh, eye and it can see and count the number of particles in the oil. Little tiny particles. Yep, so it's a cleanliness. It's actually the ISO cleanliness test is what we ran. Mm -hmm. We ran it from the sample out of the drum mm -hmm. and the sample out of the engine before we ran the engine. Right. And so the higher the number, the dirtier the oil is. Correct, okay. correct. And we break, they break it down into three numbers. The first number is essentially particles smaller than four micron. Then the next one is particles smaller than six micron. Then the last one is the particles larger than 14 right, right, microns. Right. So four, six, 14. So the ISO number for the oil out of the drum was a 16, 15, 12, okay? The sample that came out of the engine was a 19, 18, 15. Which basically means that the oil that came out of the engine before it ran right. actually had more particles in it than the oil that we put into the engine. Yes, the oil we put in the filter was cleaner yes. than the oil that came out of the engine. So that is going to debunk a couple of uh, a couple of ideas that we've seen floating around on the internet that the oil out of the out of the can is dirty. dirty. No. If the oil that comes out of your can is dirty, you need to find a different can. Yeah, a different oil supplier. A different supplier. Yeah. I know from my time when I was at Driven Racing, one of the old Joe Gibbs oil, all of the oil that came out of the blend tank before it went to packaging, went through a filter. Actually a very small filter, which is why that oil is cleaner when it comes out of the container than it did coming out of the engine. Correct. Now here's the other fun little tidbit, right? So that difference between the 12 and the 15, the number of particles larger than 14 microns out of the bottle was only 52. The number of particles that came larger than 14 that came out of the engine that was, hadn't been run yet right 331 that, that's a huge difference right there yeah so again myth debunked yep. please you saw how long it took to get oil pressure when you didn't fill the oil filter it's a smart idea to pre-fill your oil filter with nice clean oil straight from the bottle. If you want to pour it through a paint strainer to make yourself feel better. Knock yourself out. Go right Does ahead. It, do you need to? Absolutely not, because that oil that's coming out of the bottle, as we proved, is the cleanest that oil is going to be. Yeah, so that's the data yep. to debunk the myths. Yep. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.